Hey guys, welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this gouache mountain landscape. I took the reference photo in New Zealand, I believe it was somewhere just outside of Queenstown, which is a really beautiful part of the world. I'm starting by taping around the edges of the page, this prevents colours from spilling onto the pages beneath and gives a nice clean edge. I've put links to all the supplies I'm using in the description if you're interested in the materials I used to create this. The sketchbook has thick, cold pressed pages, so the paper has a slight texture to it. This is great for absorbing washes of colour. And I've only used seven colours for this painting. I use Freudian green, yellow ochre, titanium white, burnt umber, ivory black, ultramarine and cyan. Start by roughly sketching out the composition, where all the main elements will go. The composition is what drew me in to take the reference photo, because these dark green bushes frame the distant mountains, which leaves the eye in. I'm starting the painting with the sky. This is a pretty deep blue sky, so I've created a wash of ultramarine with a tiny bit of white just to brighten the mix and make it look more opaque. The sky has a gradient that goes from deep blue at the top to a fairly light blue at the bottom, so I'm going to mix transitional shades between the dark blue and the light blue, just by adding white as I go. I'm using a square synthetic brush, this is a Da Vinci Casaneo. This brush is super absorbent and holds a lot of colour. It's also fairly large compared to the size of my sketchbook, so I'm covering the white of the paper quickly. If you want, you can add in a few little clouds like I've done. And I didn't record that section as I forgot, so I'm sorry about that but I'll quickly walk you through how I painted them. The colours of the clouds are titanium white mixed with a touch of the light blue colour and the shadows beneath are the sky blue with a tiny bit of ivory black mixed in. The key to achieving the texture that makes the clouds appear fluffy and broken around the edges is to remove excess water from the brush on a paper towel so that the brush is completely dry. This is called the dry brush technique. Then dab the brush onto the paper to achieve the textured translucent look. I didn't use pure titanium white for the cloud mix because the contrast would have been too stark. Instead I toned the white down with some of the sky blue. I used a square brush to paint the clouds, but a filbert or large round brush would work too. For the distant mountain, I painted it with a block colour of ultramarine, black and titanium white. It appears as a neutral mid-tone blue, which makes it appear as if it's receding into the distance. I've mixed yellow ochre with ivory black and a little titanium white to get this sandy colour for the distant land. It's a shade or two lighter than the neutral backdrop so it stands out and gives the impression of dappled sunlight streaming across the grass. Now I'm going to block in the base colour of this mountain. This is a dark mix of ivory black and burnt umber. I want this mountain to appear bold and dark in value compared to the lighter muted distant mountain. Create this sense of perspective with the colours used. In landscapes, elements in the foreground will usually appear more saturated, vivid and contrasted compared to distant features. The mountain has undulating outcrops with yellow grasses and dark brown rock, so I'm going to convey the volume by adding highlights and shadows to the rocky and grassy areas. The rocks are a mixture of burnt umber and ivory black, then the grass is a yellow ochre, ivory black and titanium white. Because this is the first layer of the painting, I'm still using a square brush to keep the brush strokes loose because I don't want to focus on details until the final layer. Next, I'm going to block in the base colour of the grasses in the foreground. I'm starting by covering the white of the paper with a mid-tone, so then all I have to do after is add the shadow and highlight details. The grass is a yellow ochre mixed with a little ivory black and white. Then I'll quickly paint the lake. We don't need to add too many details on this section. The colour is ultramarine mixed with equal parts white and a little cyan. I'll wait for this section to dry and then add the same mix but lighten with some more white to make reflections. I painted the reflections in a line across the top of the lake where the foreground mountain meets the lake, then underneath where this large cloud is in the middle. Now I'm going to start adding in some of the details on the foreground mountain. I'm using the muted yellow ochre colour alongside the dark, almost black brown colour to create variation in the landscape. Build colour by letting layers dry in between paint applications, and the brush marks here are quite gestural at this stage and I'm painting quite quickly. 
You don't need to be too precise with the details. Landscapes are quite forgiving as they're essentially made up of an organic mix of shapes and lines. I spent a little bit of time here adjusting the colours, values and tones. Gouache is great because it dries so quickly so you can create a multi-layer painting at speed. You'll also notice that these light colours are drying darker. That's normal for gouache to dry at a different value to what it looks like when wet. It drying darker is making a more subtle contrast between the rocks and the mountain which looks good. I might go in and increase the contrast even more later. Now I'm going to block in the bushes in the foreground. I'm blocking in the bushes roughly with a neutral green midtone. This is the Viridian green mixed with yellow ochre, ivory black and a small amount of white. I'm doing this with my square brush so I can cover the ground quickly. I've waited a few minutes for the foliage layer at the front to dry. It's looking very abstract at the moment, so I'm going to start to add some details. I'm creating the impression of branches on the top here to frame the lake, and I've mixed my neutral green colour with a little more white, yellow and green to create a brighter mix. To paint the branches, I'm making short swipes upwards with the edge of the flat brush. Next I'll create some leaf details. I'm using my round brush and a mix of Viridian Green, Yellow Ochre, a tiny bit of black just to tone the mix down and a little white. Then I'm using a dotting action to create leaf textures over the dark shadow areas. The light source is coming from the right hand side so the collections of leaves curve up from the top of the bushes down to the right slightly. I'm now moving on to detailing some of the yellow foreground grasses. I mix yellow ochre and white to create this pale colour. The brown brush that I'm using is the Winsor & Newton Series 7. It tapers to a point and holds its point really well for these ultra fine lines I'm drawing. So I've painted some of the yellow grass around the bushes but I've also added some shadows beneath the bushes. I've created the shadow tone with a mix of yellow ochre and burnt umber. You can add as many or as few details as you want. Because we create a texture in the first layers, it won't take many details to give a more realistic effect. The final step is to edit any remaining details, so I'm just smoothing out some of the dry brush texture on the clouds and adding a few highlights here and there. It's good to step back from the painting every now and again to look at the composition as a whole and ask what needs changing. This looks just about finished, so I'll peel away the masking tape and we're done. Thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I would be really grateful if you gave it a like. Thanks for watching.